Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this congratulations card. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's called, it's a bit like a stepper card but it's like half a stepper card um, and I say that from the point of view that a stepper card really should have another piece that comes on here so that it would be freestanding but as you can see there's nothing there so that just falls down. So what I've done is I have made my panel here so it slides under and that is fine as long as the weight of the embellishments doesn't cause this to slide down which mine was so I put a little support in the underneath bit there okay I saw this idea on a um, Norwegian blog I'll put the link in the box below um, it was photographs and no instructions. In fact, I wouldn't have been able to read the instructions um, if it did tell me what to do. So I have interpreted what I saw in that photograph um, to this. No idea what I'm going to call it. So oh, my one criticism about this, although I'm really pleased with it, I think it's gorgeous. I love the colour. I think it looks just a little bit too heavy. So for the video, I'm going to be using Highland Heather. Okay. So let me tell you the card pieces that you're going to be needing. And I will be putting all the measurements in the box below the video, but you do have to be watching the video on YouTube to be able to access that box. Right, so the first piece you need is Highland Heather, which measures 4 and 1 8 inches by 11 and a half inches, which is 10.5 by 29 centimetres. And then a whispered white layer which measures 3 and 7 eighths inches by 5 and a half inches which is 9.9 .9 by 14 centimetres. And then a piece of designer series paper and this is from the Botanical Butterfly which is a gift that's available during celebration for an order that is 60, pound, uh, 60 euros or 45 pounds or more. And I do know that the stock on this is getting low. So if you want some of this, do place your order sooner rather than later to avoid disappointment. Right, so the design series paper is 3 and 3 quarter inches by 5 and 3 eighths inches, which is 9.6 by 13.7 centimetres. Then for the front you need a piece of Whisper White which is 3 and 7 eighths inches by 2 and 5 eighths inches which is 9.9 .9 by 6.7 centimetres. And then you need another piece of designer series paper which measures 3 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and a half inches which is 9.6 by 6.4 centimetres. And then for the front panel you need a piece of Highland Heather which measures 3 and 1 8 inches by 4 and 3 quarter inches which is 8 by 12.1 centimetres and then you need a whisper white layer which will be going on top there which measures 2 and 7 8 inches by 4 and a half inches which is 7.4 by 11.5 centimetres and then you need a contrasting piece of designer series paper which measures 2 and 3 quarter inches by 4 and 3 eighths inches which is 7.1 by 11.2 centimeters and then for the little support this is half an inch by 2 inches which is 1.3 by 5.2 um, but it doesn't have to be absolutely precise like that and then you need some scraps of whisper white for the images, the flowers, the sentiments, etc, etc. So what we're going to do first is we are going to actually make the card and this really could not be easier. So you need your scoreboard or your trimmer if you use your scoreboard, um, if you use your trimmer as your scoreboard and you need to score this at two and seven eighths inches and five and three quarter inches or 7.25 and 14.5 centimeters so in inches that's two and seven eighths and five and three quarters 
Okay, that's all that we need to do. So, we move this out of the way. We won't be needing that again. We will be needing our bone folder. So first of all, we're going to fold this in half as normal. Make sure our sides line up and then give a good burnish on there. Then as you open this up, you need to fold that back down for the step apart of our card. Uh, it needs to go the other way, doesn't it? Okay, so you got it like that. That's showing all right? Yeah. See, I've got the sunshine with me today. It's lovely. Right, let me just give this one a burnish. There we go. Now I'm going to put my layers on to start off with. So for the back, it's these two. I'm going to be using Tombow for all of this. Just get rid of that sticky bit. Are you going to... That is going to shoot out. I can see it. Oh, that's it. Got the plug. Yep. I will show you the first card that I made. Um, and it was because when I made that one, I learned quite a lot about the bits that you need to do to hold that layer in place to stop the card falling over. I was happy with the design but uh, it, it wasn't standing as nicely as that one, let's just say that. So I will show you because if you change the design, the stamp sets and everything that you use, it's something that you need to know to make sure that uh, your card will stand up. Now this is one of those designs, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. Okay, so I'm having that pattern and that pattern like that and then it's going to be the center that's got the gingham gala paper Okay, looks like I've got some blue oozing. Mm, that feels okay. There we go, that's up. Yep. So happy with that. So next we're going to put these pieces together and I think I will use the small squares. I don't normally do videoing this time of the morning. Um, I mean, it's not early by long chalk, but at this time of the day, the sun is pouring into my room. I 
I suffer with um, migraines, aura migraines, called but caused largely by um, flashing lights. So I have to be careful of the sunshine. And um, of course, I've got the sunniest room in the house. <laughs> I should really have a room at the front of the house so I don't get all this sunshine because I have to close the blind when it's when the sun is shining but because I have to close the blind it makes me very aware of exactly how much sunshine we get here in the UK and it's lots more than I would ever have imagined I mean I know we are having some exceptionally good weather at the moment um, well for the last 12 months or so I suppose um, but even so, during the winter we've had so much. Right, um, the stamps that I'm using, one of my favourites I have to say, is Petal Palette. I'm going to be using The Bird, that one and that one. And I'm going to be using Congratulations and some things are just meant to be the, like the two of you together. And the dies that go with that are called Petals and More. So I am going to be using that, 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 and that. Um, and what else do I need? I need one of the stitched shapes framelits and I need number two on the square. That's what I've used for the sentiment. Right. I'm using Memento ink because I want to use um, my blends. Right, put those there. So this is my sentiment. It's a bit dirty. There we go, that's good. Um, let's move those out over there. Oh, come back, we can get the bird on here, can't we? Yep, he's good. And the big flower, is that enough? Yep, that will do nicely. I do find that this particular stamp set is so easy um, to use the blends with. And I think for me it's because they've got such thick black lines as outlines. Because if you go too close to the, or if you go right on or slightly over the black line, the blends tend to keep seeping. But it doesn't happen with this at all. Right, I forgot that one, didn't I? Let's just put this one up in the corner there. So this does give you an idea of how much cardstock, you, um, Whisper White you need. I have already done all of my pe No, I haven't done them all, have I? I didn't do the sentiment. Um, but this big one and that one have already been done and coloured, just to save a bit of time. Um, the bird. So what I do with the bird is this is crumb cake. This is the light crumb cake. So I just go over him. As you know I'm not much of a colourer and if I find ways that I can get a good job, good job done by cheating I will do. Okay so that's that level, layer and we had the darker one and I do that wing, that part of his wing, I suppose. And then his body there. And then here coming up to his throat. And a little bit around the back of his head. And then I'm going to use my light to blend the colours in. So it doesn't get that harsh edge. Okay, and I do like to just colour the bits that look quite white. It's only on this bird that it bothers me. 
again because I'm using blends have to be careful not to go too close to the edge right so that's the bird he's ready that's ready to be done um, Highland Heather and Granny Apple Light so with the leaves on here it's difficult to do anything because they are so tiny right I will do this flower here but you don't want to watch me do all of it okay so that's going over with the light colour and I don't I really don't know much about using blends but I do know that when you're doing light and dark it's best to do the two of them before they dry so rather than going on to do a flower it's best for me to do my dark bits now right what I tend to do here is I just go round the outside of the leaves I just give a little dark line there and that's on all of them and then back to the lighter one again and blend it in I do exactly the same sort of thing with the flowers as you can see this really is very quick to do okay so then I'm going to do my dark colour and I either decide to do all the tops of the petals or all the bottoms of them and I just do a line around I find it easier to turn my paper around because I get less confused about what is the top of the petal because it does change direction not that it really matters right so I've done that one let's go back to the light one and just blend it in Okay, so I'll bring that up to show you. Did I do one of those? Oh yes, I've got one of those done already. I didn't show you what I do try and do with the darker colour here, did I? I just try and get a very thin bit in there. But it is almost impossible and I don't really think it's worth the effort. So let me show you this one finished. Okay, where I've tried to do the light and dark green and the light and dark Highland Heather. But it shows up really well on my big flowers. This is what I'm really proud of. You see how that I got the dark and then the light. Looks like I went round the bottom of the petals. Oh no, it looks like I changed my mind. <laughs> that's all right but it looks okay I'm happy right so those two don't need to be die cut those I will oh I like die cut those can't I because I can save those right so I'm going to get my big shot over oh I've forgotten to do this haven't I okay so that's Memento. Just 
make sure that's big enough. Ooh. Yep, that'll be right. That was close. Right, so I need all of those, don't I? this on my little wheelie thing by the side of my desk here and I've got the wheels hooked up on something so if I pull it so the uh, big shot is really close to me you're going to hear a really loud clatter right so we will start off with this one in fact I want it at the back don't I because I want to look at it the right way I'm just going to try and get this in the centre. How much can you see? All right, OK, quite a lot there. The word congratulations, I don't think, has been written very straight on there. And it's very difficult to decide how to position it. So what I do is I put the C so that it's level with that curve, the outside curve, and the S so it's level with that. But this one's got to be slightly lower because it's a small letter, if that makes any sense at all. Right, so this one. And this one. I think I just made that jump, didn't I? And I'll separate these two just in case I have trouble with dies moving, especially with the bird. See what I mean? <laughs> should be fine and then this one now this one what I'm doing is I'm going to get the some things are just as close to the top because I want to put a little heart down by the together and if that's positioned carefully should be able to do it so that together front and back does not get stitched on. Right, let me have a look. Oops. Oh, that's okay. Yep, I think that's all right. So let me get my other mat. Sentiment. Is that in? S oh. oh, it's because I've got something on the screen so I can't see through it. But I think you can see it. that does look straight. Yes, I think so. I'll save that bit of paper. Right, 
So what I'm going to do first is, shall I put these, oh I don't need that one do I? I can't remember whether I put them on first or not. Um, no, I think I did this bit first. Right, so what I did was to find the position of this, I turned it over and then I saw, the, made sure I got the same gap there, same gap there, and the same there, and the same there. And when I was happy, I took my pencil, uh, which I'm sure I put back in there, maybe not, oh yes it's right beside me. Right, and I'm just going to draw a line by the white bit there and the white bit there. So that's how high I am going to be putting my glue. If you've got a um, directional pattern on this, do be careful which way you're going it. You don't want your pattern upside down. Right, now just put the glue from the two pencil marks and everywhere down. Right, so bring that back and again position it where you had it before. Pull that down a bit, make sure it's straight Pull it down a bit. Right, okay, I think that's good. Make sure you don't have any glue on the back there. Right, so I am now going to decorate this and I'm going to do exactly what I did before because I like the design that I did. So I'm using dimensionals. So first of all the flowers are going to be going there and that's going to be going there and my congratulations will be there. Okay, So just roughly lay it out for yourself so you know where everything's going to be going. So I'm going to do the sentiment first. Is right under my nose as always. Right, didn't empty that either. Right, so that's going. I'm just leaving a small tad. Just make sure it's straight. That looks straight. It's amazing how different things look. I don't know, maybe it does. Um, how different things look when you're looking at it from where I'm sitting over to that and then when I bring it up to look at it straight. And the ink coming through when you use blender pens, that's normal. So I don't think you've done anything wrong. Okay. I'm not normally a lilac person, but I love this colour. Mind you, I've always said that about orange, and I have to say my ideas about orange are changing. I think that's our grapefruit grove that's doing that. I think it's beautiful. Right, you can lay this at an angle like that if you want. Um, I think I'll do it like that. And then this one is going on with dimensionals. Oops. 
Don't go. Let me hold this one up. Yeah, I slid this slightly underneath the leaves there. That's it. Make sure in the middle and straight. Just lift that up a little bit. Oh, that's better. Definitely better. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now we need to put these two on. What I found with the first one, first card that I did, which is this one, quite happy with the design and the colour and everything. It's just that I made a mistake with how I fixed this. My first mistake was only fixing one side so this side doesn't stay down properly. And the other thing is it was a mistake to use the butterfly because it meant that this panel wasn't allowed to move. If it moved and it went up, you see, it covers up the antenna. So really, ideally, I wanted it to stay like that. Can I see that? But then when that moved up, not a good idea. So that's why I now do it like this. Um, and I think what I did, I used small dimensionals, didn't I? The bird had three. I remember that. And he had them across the top here. And I did three because I wanted to make sure that he was quite secure there. Did I put anything on his tail? I did think about doing half on his tail, but no, I didn't. Oh, that's all right. Obviously, he doesn't need it. All right, okay. So now what I'm going to do is hold that in place. But when you put this down, make sure that you're not putting your dimensionals on top of this piece and it is easy if you watch it from underneath and the other thing to watch is that you're not going off your card too much in fact I'm going to bring his tail back in and that's like the um oh that was the other thing mistake that I made with the butterfly I'll bring that back and show you There we go, that's fine. Okay, so just peep in from the top and from the sides to make sure that you're not adhering this one down. You see what I mean about this? Without that support, that just goes. In fact, I've forgotten to score that, never mind. But with the butterfly, the other thing was I put it too far over here. So to get that into one of our envelopes, I'm gonna to have to give that a little bit of a push to get it back in there. So do watch out for that. Um, let's pop that there. You may want to put a dimensional there. I thought about it, but obviously didn't do it. Right, how many did I use here? There's three on the top as well. So three right just under the flowers these mini dimensionals are actually brilliant for this it saves all that cutting dimensionals in half we used to do oh come on that's better Right now, I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to adhere this down like that, but I'm going to have to hold it up so that I can see where I'm putting my dimensionals. B 
because I don't want... Oh, that's right, I know. No, no, no. Excuse me while I talk to myself. <laughs> right. No, that's not quite right, is it? Just having a look at the lovely lipstick one that I've done. See the position of that. That's it. I was going to say it, it slid underneath, but it didn't slide underneath that much, so what have I done? Oh, this one went, this one went a bit higher, but that's okay, because it's going to be coming down a little bit. Okay, so when it's standing, it's going to be something like that. You can still see the leaves there. Okay, i just give that a good press, make sure it's stuck. Right, now the last bit we need to do is that little bit underneath. And I should have told you to score it at half an inch, one inch and one and a half inches, because I don't like just folding. Uh, this will be fine. Okay, just give it a good burnish. I've done that. Fold it back. You need a W. And don't worry if they're not all even. There you go, look, I've got one that's longer than the others, but it will work. And I haven't actually done that very straight either, but you know me in straight lines. Okay, so I've got my W there. That's all you need to do. And then what I'm going to do is hold it like that, and I'm going to put glue on those two bits. Now it really doesn't matter where you put this support. I put it lower rather than higher because the higher up you go, the wider the, the base will open up and you don't want it to open up too wide. Okay, so now I've got that. Just fold that up. I'll show you how far. I'm only going in about three quarters of an inch. Just give Tombow a couple of minutes to, no, a few seconds rather, to get to grips. And there you go. Okay, so I'm about three quarters of an inch up there. And that is what is going to help our card stand up with that bit. Okay, show you sideways so you can see the support and you can see how it's being held in there. I thought that was a really great idea, I loved it. Now for the last bit that I'm doing, it's I want a little heart there, which is that one. That one I already had, I'd kept it from where I'd used our hearts. There was a complete strip of hearts and it actually punched out all the shapes and I saved them all um, but I don't have anything for this so what I did was I had a look at my punches and I had the dog punch and there's a little heart there which is the one I'm going to be using if you don't have that punch if you've got this one the gingerbread man there's a little heart on that as well okay but that one really is quite small this is a lovely size and then what I did with it, in fact, let me just show you. I think mine will be dry. So just take a scrap. There's that one there. And this one here, I don't know if you can see, let me bring it up to you. I put some of our fine tip glue on it and I've made it gone all nice and shiny. Okay, I'd like to know how I did that. Right, so that's my heart. I squeezed some on first of all and then I with the uh, the tip 
I started moving the glue around. I was squeezing for a little while because I want this to come up as a bump. I don't want it just flat. But just don't let your tip go over the edge. And then just leave that to dry. And it really doesn't take too long. Okay, let me just get that back on there. Did I just knock the camera? Sorry if I did. Right, there we go. So that's our fine tip glue pen. I'll put that aside for it to dry. And this one, I'm going to put one dimensional on it, one small one. Ooh, just about. Try not to squeeze it because I don't really know how dry it is. I did this about an hour and a half ago, I suppose. And it is a beautiful sunny day out there, although it's winter. So, come on, off you come. That's it. Very gently. There we go. And if I can get a rhinestone onto that, which I'm not sure I will be able to. Oh, and I also put rhinestones down here. Right, there's a nice little one. Where's my paper piercer? Oops. I don't like that one. Let's try another one. I would prefer that to go a little bit further on, rather than sitting on the edge there. That's it, just there. Oh, good. Yep, yep, I like that. Right, now these larger ones, I'll have one here. And one here. So, there we go. Um, as I say, I will put the link to the website where I saw this in the box below but I hope you like it and I hope you give it a try um, I do think that the Highland Heather is a lot softer um, I, I do like this but I think this looks well more soft so there we go that's today's project many thanks for joining me if you have any questions or um, any comments to make please leave them in the box below and you must be watching the video on YouTube to be able to access that box um, also if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today there'll be a link to my 24 7 on my stamping up shop in the box below if you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click the subscribe button which is down there in the right hand corner and then there's the bell to press to say you want to be uh, you want an email notification when I upload a new one which is normally twice a week many thanks for joining me today until next time happy crafting cheerio